Welcome back to Tofu Tuesdays. I'm excited to share with you how it is that I chop with a very sharp knife. So let's hope that I don't cut my toes because they're very precious to me. And of course we have the garlic and remember last episode, I hope you can watch that if you didn't catch it, I burned the garlic on my first try. So it was uh, kind of embarrassing, but we all have to start somewhere, don't we? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do some of the chopping first. And um, again, for all of you who are just joining for the first time, my New Year's resolution for 2021 is to learn how to cook. I know I can fly a plane with my feet, but I'm still learning how to cook and be better at that. Um, it's very intimidating. Uh, it takes me longer. Things do take me longer, so I've had to learn how to be patient. But again, if I can do this, so can you. So um, I hope this inspires you for 2021 with your own resolutions, with your own goals to stretch yourself, to be better, and to grow. So let's go ahead and start chopping this up. Um, here we are with the garlic again. The little trick that we do um, that I learned from Patrick was to essentially use a pretty big knife or something flat to go ahead and smash down on that garlic until it just that little pop so that I can easily go ahead and peel off those uh, all that skin there. I'm gonna put it here to the side um, and peel that off, make sure it's uh, nice and, uh, well, I don't really know how to, how to judge whether it looks nice or not, but uh, I'll just make it look as best I can <laughs> with my toes. It is taking me longer, but uh, this little trick did help, so it makes it easier to peel off some of that uh, garlic skin and uh, make sure it's all ready to add to the marinade. I'm excited about this dish. I love Korean barbecue and uh, my sister is actually based in South Korea. Her husband's stationed there. So I'm excited about trying this out and I'll be able to share with her that I was able to succeed at this. If I succeed, let's hope I can do that. Okay, let's see. Okay, made, the, made a little bit more pressure on that garlic clove. Make sure it's, uh, there we go. Now I can continue the peeling of that. Oh, there it comes, a lot easier to peel that off there. There we go. And I'm about finished there and I'm gonna go to cutting the onions here. Well, I guess uh, that is a question because I don't normally cut things up, but this, is gonna, this, this recipe calls for that. So I'm gonna do my best not to cut my feet. Uh, now that I'm done with the garlic, I'll go ahead and go over here, pull the onions up. And uh, we've done uh, pre-prepared ahead of time some of the scal I'm sorry, scallions. I've been saying onions, scallions. We prepared those ahead of time, but I left the last two scallions so that you can all see some of my chopping technique with my toes. Let's hope I don't cut my toes. So let's go ahead, I'll hold it in place. Um, and by the way, I am wondering from all of you, some of you probably cook, what should I be looking for in good garlic, uh, good onions when I'm going to the store? Uh, and what, what do I need to look for? To, what's a good measure? Okay, I love this knife. It looks pretty dull, but it's pretty darn sharp. So I'm gonna use one foot, and I'm very right foot dominant. As you can tell, most of the things I'm doing and demonstrating are done with the toes of my right foot because I'm very dominant. I'm curious, how what's your dominant foot? Okay, so here we go. Cut the ends off of the scallions. Okay, and I will start the process of, it says here, finely chopped scallions, six of those. So let's hold these together. It's easier to do two at a time instead of doing them individually. Hopefully that's gonna work. Somewhat finely chopped. Keep going. The thing about using a knife with my toes is the angle in which I'm gripping the handle. It's always a little more challenging when, when I'm using my feet because I don't quite have the same grip that someone would have with their hands. Obviously my toes are shorter than fingers, so I don't have as much leverage. So I'm actually just moving the knife back and forth so I can make sure I get that uh, nice chopped piece of scallion. And I find, I find unique ways to adapt with using my toes, as uh, some of you may know. But definitely cooking is a beginning, this is a beginning uh, for me in this whole field of cooking. And I know some of you are probably pretty skilled at cooking. 
I'm excited to hear pointers. If you have any, feel free to message them. Um, and for those of you, again, who are joining us, uh, my New Year's resolution for 2021 is to learn how to cook and cook with my feet. I've been pretty lazy in that department, so now I'm stretching myself with this new goal. It's a little intimidating at first, but, uh, you know, if I can do this, then you can do anything, and I, I hope to encourage you uh, in this process. So, and what do you see right now? Just uh, go ahead and message in the comments. Hopefully you can see me chopping here. Um, we're making sure we're tweaking this as we go to make sure it's all very visual. And what I, cause what I can see right now is clearly um, all of my supplies have been set up ahead of time. We're using this little roller, roller island so that I can have some more space added for when I'm done using some of the uh, things for, for moving those on uh, to the roller island. Um, we have up here, and obviously you can see it, is an induction stovetop. And the reason for that is because if I used the stovetop behind me, for one, it is harder, and to be on the same level is a lot easier. So the induction stovetop was easier to, to use, as well as it's easier for me to be able to face you and do exactly what I'm doing right now. We're almost finished here. I don't know if these are as finely chopped as they need to be, but I'm doing my best because it is tough once you start, so they want to move on their own and it's kind of like a little harder because now it's like they're trying to do their own little thing, but I'm slowly, slowly chopping away as finely as I possibly can. Um, one of the pointers that was at the last episode was to use uh, silicone silicone um, utensils and tools and I really love that suggestion from last episode so I went searching for some having an extra grip kind of like if you can see here on the knife it makes it easier between my toes so having extra grip is help helpful for any kind of tool whether it's cooking in the kitchen or grip with other things other household tools and such so I'm gonna go ahead and start the rice too as I'm slowly chopping away. Let's go ahead and start the rice. It's going to take us some time to um, cook this and we have to, let's see here, I'm going to go ahead and turn this on, white rice. Okay, we really have put the water inside there. So, I'm going to go ahead and take this off. It's a little bit more difficult to take this off because the angle at which I'm pulling it off, but there we go. I'm going to move this to the side, go ahead and we've already measured out about four, four cups of rice here. This was one of the first things I ever learned how to cook just because I needed to learn how to cook rice. Growing up in a Filipino household with my mom who did all the cooking, she did teach me how to cook rice. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour the uh, four cups of rice in. It's a lot of ab work. Those abs can come in handy, I should say footy. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put that aside there, the container, and uh, close off the rice cooker so we can go ahead and start the process because rice takes a little bit longer. But we'll just, you know, we're going to wait a few minutes here. So, go ahead and that's all set up. I need to rotate it though so make sure I can get it. Um, one second here. I, there's one thing I do need to check. And that is the water level, so let me make sure that it's up to four cups, and we do need some more water, so I'm going to add some more water here. I almost forgot that. That was that would have been bad. Okay, it would have been very dry rice. So let's go ahead and uh, add all the way up to the four cups. Spill in some, but it's all right. It's just water. We're up to four cups of rice. There we go. And go ahead and close that off. This I need to figure out how to turn this thing because it's you have to rotate it in order to make sure it's closed. So I'm gonna use both feet to go ahead and close this. But ah, we'll go ahead and uh, I might call for some help here just to assist with the rotation of the rice cooker. Okay, let's see here. Ah, okay, it helps when I rotate it the right way. 
And now it's closed, so I'm gonna put white rice. Interesting, here we go. Where is that? Okay, power here is, it's not coming on, so maybe I don't have it plugged in, so bear with us here. We're gonna make sure that this is plugged in, because I'm turning this on. Oh, these things happen once in a while. It's all about patience. Okay, so, hmm. Interesting. Okay, it's probably because it's not. Ah, there we go. It was something to do with the cord. Okay, now I can turn it on, press white rice, and go ahead and let it do what it's best at doing, making that rice. Okay. Oh, the rice is all taken care of. Get back to the scallions here. Make sure this is all set here. Ah, there we go. And it says here, three P, five minutes. Okay, we're good. Okay, let me go ahead and cut up the scallions here. Um, back to the chopping. Takes a lot of time to chop. I wonder if using a chopping tool would make it a little easier. Maybe that'll be for the next episode. So anyway, let me go ahead and continue this, finish it up, that's close enough. So these are, uh, that'll be plenty since we already pre-cut some ahead of time. So we're done with the scallions, the garlic is ready, the rice is being cooked. Now I'm gonna make sure I get these other ingredients all together um, because part of the process here is to first soak the 16 12 inch wooden skewers in water for at least 30 minutes. And we did that ahead of time. Next is to um, thread steak onto skewers Dividing evenly, place in a large baking dish. Stir together all remaining ingredients in a small bowl. Uh, we'll go ahead and do all the ingredients in a small bowl before we get to the, the meat. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off here. Got all the ingredients. We have scallions that were pre-cut ahead of time. And we got that. Um, we have the, we need one cup of cider vinegar. So here we go, cider vinegar. Okay, looks like a brand new bottle. So uh, you'll get to see my uh, bottle opening skills. Gripping between my toes is actually uh, pretty easy because they're shorter than fingers. So opening up bottles is never really <laughs> too difficult. One of my uh, college tricks was everyone would always hand me a, their uh, beer bottles and I'd twist them open for them, as long as they had the sw twist tops. Okay, so here we go. Let's go ahead and pour ourselves here a uh, one half a half of a cup of cider vinegar. So half of a cup, and we will just go ahead and use this to measure. Okay, a little bit more. About half a cup. Okay, half a cup of that. Um, what else do we need? The scallions. We'll go ahead and add those. We'll be ready to put those in there. Um, next is a fourth of a cup of reduced sodium soy sauce. So a fourth of a cup, let me go ahead and pour this in here. Well, we also have another measuring tool for that. So I'll go ahead and uh, switch over to this tool here for, oh, I'm sorry. Let me go ahead and pull this here. Fourth of a cup of soy sauce, okay. Here we go. This, I'm so thankful that this has wheels because I can just wheel it closer to me. Okay, soy sauce. Sorry, that's sesame oil. Okay, here's the soy sauce. There we go. Okay, soy sauce, a fourth of a cup of that. Here's the trick. I'm gonna have to use both feet now to make sure that um, I hold this still and pour the soy sauce in. Okay, it says fourth cup. Actually, let's make it easier on myself and use this instead. Let's just make life easier. <laughs> okay, fourth a cup of this. Let's see where the fourth cup measuring. Okay, there we go, fourth of a cup. Pour that in. Next is fourth of a cup of reduced sodium soy sauce. Okay, we did that, so I'm rereading that again. A fourth of a cup of honey. So honey is next. Let me go ahead and set these aside now that I'm finished using this. Okay, I'll just set that aside there. 
Honey, okay. Now this is always more challenging, it's gonna be sticky, but uh, you gotta do what you gotta do. So I'm gonna go ahead and use, um, hmm, make sure I have all of this soy sauce in there. Okay, let me go ahead and put the fourth of a cup here. <clears throat> Let's hope that this honey is gonna be easier to open than earlier. But see, now my toes are all slick. But let's see, if I do use both toes, uh, both, okay. I'm gonna have to figure out how to open this up. I'm gonna have to call for help on that one. <laughs> okay, once that honey is open, um, I'm gonna add some more, oh, okay, here I go, pass this over. Thank you. Okay, it's even hard for him to open. He's using his shirt to open that up, so it wasn't just me. Okay, for the cup of that, we're gonna use uh, this. Thank you for this measuring cup, but the thing is now I'm gonna have to figure out how to get this out here. And let's go ahead and I, okay, let's see here. Um, let's see, maybe I'll, let's see if I can pour this out. Hmm, it's too sticky, so. <laughs> Okay, what am I going to do here? Let's see. Maybe um, I need to heat this up for a little bit. Oh, let me just scoop it more of this out here. Hold on one second. Oh, let's go ahead and use this here. Let me scoop this out now and see if it'll... Well, that's the challenge now. How to do that. So let me go ahead and use the spoon and scoop some of the honey out. As much as I want to avoid the stickiness of this honey, I have to get it out at some point. Pour it uh, and put that into the one fourth cup measuring spoon. Here we go. Oh, it's gonna be messy. Okie dokie. Let's see your one fourth. Okay, is bear with me here. This is where the patience is necessary. Okay, let me get another spoon here to try and scoop this off. Oof. Let's see here. Hopefully I don't need this for anything. Actually, let me use the other one. Okay. Here we go. Any suggestions from over there? <laughs> How do I get this off? Scrape it on the side of the quarter cup. Leave the teaspoon alone. Okay, yeah, we're going to need that for on later. The side of the quarter cup. Let's see here. Quarter cup The is... one you're pouring into. Okay. Just scrape it on the side of that and then scoop it. No. The black quarter cup. Yeah, scrape that. Scrape the spoon on the side of it. Okay. And go for another scoop. Okay, got it. Just on the side like this. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we need some more. So, okay. Yeah, go for another scoop with the spoon. Here we go. Yeah, we're going to need another big scoop. Okie dokie. I think that should be enough. There we go. Go ahead and scrape that off with the side of this measuring spoon. Okay, I think that's close enough. So let's get rid of this. Uh... Okay, into the, here we go. One fourth a cup of this in here now, but now it will be difficult to get this off. So let me go ahead and, oh, there it goes. There it goes, okay. Okay, next is uh, one tablespoon of grated peeled fresh ginger. That's why we need to keep the tablespoon around. So, okay, bear, bear with me here. I need to go ahead and finish getting this honey off of this. Uh, here we go. There we go. Oh, close enough. It's so, so messy. Okay, okay. Okay, that's close enough. Next is that ginger and luckily just to make things a lot easier we have a squeeze bottle of ginger so thank thank goodness for that it's ginger stir in paste so I'll go ahead and put this in here or can I use this okay yeah let me go ahead and put this in here okay let's go ahead and get to the gin Woo! lost the ginger <laughs> anyway um, thanks Pat a tablespoon of grated peeled fresh ginger and we're gonna have that here on this tablespoon. Thank you. Okay, that happens. It's a good thing that Chewy's not around. He actually is around, but he's on a leash. But uh, he is really loving the, all the smells today. So, go ahead and put a teaspoon of that in here. 
Wow, it makes it so much easier. I think I want everything in tubes like this because it makes life so much easier. Okay, that's finished. Check your measurements. Let's go ahead and make sure I have this at one tablespoon. Close enough, yeah, that's good. Okay, go ahead and uh, cap that off. Here we go. Into the marinade. Next is two garlic cloves, and that's mince. So we'll go ahead and use the crusher, which this crusher, which was pretty cool finding out about it. Uh, my mother-in-law got one, and um, what I love about it is you can actually, it's supposed to peel it as well, but obviously I showed you earlier how I peel, um, so um, we're not gonna do that. This tool is supposed to be able to peel it as well, but we're gonna go ahead and crush, crush the uh, garlic in here. Okay, come on. How did I put that in wrong? Okay, well, there we go. Oh, the other way. Okay, flip this over, put this in. There we go, okay, now, Garlic. Here we go. Crush it. I love crushing things, so let's see. We're gonna crush this like that. Well, not much of it comes out, so I will just do that. Let's see, it's crushed, but it doesn't come out. So what I'm gonna have to do is just uh, crush it further. Oh, come on. Oh, this is a trick because I'm having to really crush. I might actually ask for some help. Oh, there we go. Got the crushed garlic to come through, but it's still really tough. Okay, Patrick, can you help me with the rest of this crushing, please? Um, just to make sure that it's a little easier. So he's gonna crush that for me. We have another clove over here. So I'll put this over here for Patrick to go ahead and crush for me. So the two garlic cloves minced two teaspoons of the Asian fish sauce. So the Asian fish sauce is over here. There we go. So here we go, this is with this um, teaspoon here. There we go. This always has a very interesting smell. I remember coming home when um, fish sauce was being used and spelling it right away and knowing that there was some cooking happening in the kitchen. So we'll go ahead with get two teaspoons of this for the marinade. Okay, here we go. I guess the real question is what's gonna be a better way to pour it? <clears throat> so you all can see, so that's one. One, two, okay, I'm done with that. I think we have one last ingredient to add to the marinade. It's right here. So I need to get one teaspoon of this sweet chili sauce. So thank you, Pat, for that. We'll add that garlic in there. And here we go, another bottle to open. Oh, that one's a lot easier than the other two. Okay, here we go. Um, one teaspoon of this. Teaspoon. There's gotta be a way to make this easier. I wonder, if, for one, um, this is a bigger bottle, so I need to use both feet to pour it. So what I'll just do is Pour it over this so I don't make too much of a mess and uh, hold that in place hopefully so that you can all see there. I'm just trying to figure out a way to measure it without... Okay, let's see here. Well, I could probably just guess too. Let's just go ahead and guess on that one. <laughs> I don't want to make a mess here. So let's just estimate that this is about a teaspoon right about there. That's about it. That's good. So a teaspoon of that. Okie dokie, now we need to go ahead and go on to chopping up the rest of the meat. Um, so it says thread steak onto skewers, dividing evenly, place in a large baking dish. So um, we'll go ahead and start doing that. Oh, we can't forget the rest of the scallions over here. I almost forgot those. 
So let me go ahead and add those in there. Now I know touching the meat with my toes, I'm gonna have to be very uh, aware of oh, what I do with my feet afterwards. So I have a pair of slippers on the other side of the island that you can't quite see from where you are all um, watching. But I always keep a pair of what I call sanitary slippers in the kitchen or um, in the bathroom if I want to keep my feet completely clean. I essentially wash my feet thoroughly before putting my feet into the slippers and that way I can keep them clean when I'm walking around the house. Um, so I have a pair of those on the other side of the island and I'm going to put those on after I'm done cutting up the meat so I can get that the whole uh, tray into the oven. So, okay, now on, let's move this out of the way. We will have to cook that later. So, move this out of the way. Move this, this, and everything here. Let's move on to the next thing, and that is chopping up the meat. So I have a, we have already prepared some of the meat ahead of time. And uh, here's the thing, I need to show you how it is I'm going to cut a couple pieces. So we left about two pieces left, just so that you can get an idea about chopping meat. I don't want to slide off the edge of this island. That would be horrible in the middle of a, a shoot and just like land on the tile. Okay, so. Sounds like the rice is cooking. You can hear it. Here we go. Um, I actually prefer a bigger knife for cutting meat. It just makes it easier. Go ahead and uh, make sure that I clear out more of this. Sorry. Um, let's see here. What is Patrick suggesting? Okay. Move over. Any ideas? <laughs> yes, suggestions? Yes. the meat on the chopping board. Oh, I need to get this meat on the chopping board. Okay. That shows you how limited experience, how much limited experience I have. So I'm going to be, in fact, if I can recall, this is probably like one of the first times I've ever cut meat with my toes. So let's make a clearing here. Uh, move this out of the way. Go ahead and cut, uh, move this out of the way. And uh, clear up some of the scallions. There's a few left, but I think we'll be fine. And we'll go ahead and just put that meat. Okay, well, I guess I'll just go ahead and just grab it. <laughs> grab it between my toes. Put it on the shopping board. Feels very interesting. Whew! That shows you I haven't touched very many pieces of meat. Okay, here we go. Now I'm going to go ahead. <laughs> I don't know why Patrick is over there wincing from what. <laughs> How's it going over here? As you can tell, I'm not the cook in the family. I'm the one learning. So how's it going, Pat, from your perspective? Are we doing good? You're doing great. Okay. <laughs> Holding back the laughter over there. Okay. <laughs> this is going to be more of an entertaining piece than an educational piece. Okay. So I was watching Patrick also when he does a lot of his chopping um, and cut cutting of meat. So one of the things I'm going to do is just hold on to it one side and try to get a nice little sliver going. Here we go. Um, wow, that's tougher to cut than it looks. It looks like you just cut right through it, but it's like taking some effort to cut through here. This meat, okay, come on. Oh boy, it's not gonna look as beautiful, but hopefully I can get a small piece so we can go ahead and put a skewer right through it. Okay. Okie dokie, that is tougher than I thought and it wiggles around. So it's like trying to cut. I might have to have help over here because this is one of the first times I've actually cut into some meat. Let's see here. Oh, okay, there we go. Or maybe I need a sharper knife. I don't know how I can get any sharper than this, but that like that suggestion from the last episode, going ahead and using some silicone on the on the grip, which on the handle, which will allow me to grip. A little easier so let's see I just wanted to give you all an example of a piece it takes a lot longer to chop because of the fact that there's applying pressure from this angle is different than applying pressure from if it's you know if you're leaning over it like you would if you had your hands uh, chopping up the meat okay there we go I got one piece and it's kind of uh, becoming difficult 
but let's get that piece. Come on, I'm determined. Okay, here we go. Okay, channeling all the strength I've got. So I got this one piece of meat. I want to cut, chop my other toe. That would be horrible. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's see. Okay, here it is. Um, come on, come on, come on. Okay, here we go. Oof, that was tough. Ah, finally. That was really tough, but I mean, there we go. Maybe I'll find another knife sometime. It's really, really sharp. Okay, so that's how I cut meat. And now we're gonna use one of these skewers and go ahead and skewer that meat. Give you an idea of the process here. I'm sure your meat slices are gonna little, look a little prettier than this. Oh, Chewy now can smell what I'm doing. And he's here trying to get as close to me as possible, but he's on a leash. Okay, here we go. So, it said to thread steak onto the skewer, dividing evenly, place in a large baking dish. So, um, let me go ahead and thread this. Let's see here. Threading will be a little more difficult, but it's kind of fun playing with the meat. I shouldn't say playing with the meat, but here we go. Here, here we go. Don't want to poke myself. Threading through. Next part. Here we go. And last piece. Okay. Hey, look at that. <laughs> okay. I'm pretty proud of that. Because that's the first time I've ever thread meat through this, uh, through a skewer. Okay, ready to put onto this sheet. I'm going to ask for help for the rest of this and then we're gonna start stirring up the marinade. So, um, it says here that I'm going to need to um, spray the broiler rack with nonstick spray and preheat the bro broiler. Uh, I'll do that um, right now, actually, but uh, let me go ahead and get to that broil. I'm gonna, I have a little bit of a step stool behind the island so I can get out here in a safe manner. Broil up to, here we go. Okay, now let's go ahead. I should probably wash my toes though before the next step. So, getting up on, an, on a little bit of a bar stool gives me some elevation with my toes so I can reach over and use some soap and make sure that my feet are nice and clean. There we go. my feet clean is a must for me. Obviously, uh, my feet are my hands, so it's incredibly important to keep them clean. And one of the things is when you're always using your feet to do things, you have to walk on your feet, and uh, I'm always barefoot. So it's really a challenge to keep my toes and feet clean. So that's why the slippers come in handy for that purpose. I think that's close enough. Pretty thorough. Now I'm gonna move over there. Wait, did you put that foot in your slipper already? Yeah, that's the thing. The slippers, well one of them Chewy got a hold of, but he left it here. The other one is right here. So what I'll do is just step on the top of the slippers so that I don't have to no, you, put them back in. I'm just no, hopping on the top to the stop part. But the you top. touched raw meat with that foot that you've then put in your slipper. Yeah, but I'm just touching the top of the slipper so that it's okay. not in contact with the area of the slipper that I used to uh, walk over to turn on the broiler. Okay, got it. Okay, next is to go ahead and start this uh, marinade. Obviously, uh, it's gonna be, at, what is it, it says here? <clears throat> Cover, okay, here we go. Let's start this up at 1200 with 180 degrees. So go ahead. Wait, let me go ahead and stir this up first before I even get started on that. So I love this wood wooden uh, spatula. It's great. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and mix all this marinade together. So it's more 
evenly distributed all ingredients in, that have been put into this. Okie dokie. I think we're pretty good there. It's that honey that's so tough to stir. It's so sticky. Now I gotta keep stirring it. Okay. I think that's good enough. Okay. Okay, maybe I'll just, yeah. That does help to just kind of do a different stirring me uh, method to get, make sure that honey comes from the bottom of the, the pot here. Okay. See, it's already, it's stuck on the uh, spatula too. Okay, okay, that's close enough. Set this over there so I don't make too much of a mess. Now let's turn this on to 1200 with 180 degrees. It's on here, 1200, 180. There we go. Okay, stir together all remaining ingredients in a small bowl. And um, we'll go ahead and start that. It says here for, let's see, how long do I need to do for about eight minutes? Bring to a boil, boil stirring occasionally until sauce is thickened about eight minutes. Alexa, start an eight minute timer. Eight minutes, starting now. That means the rice is ready. Okay, so go ahead and we know the rice is prepared. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and spray the broiler rack with nonstick spray and preheat the broiler. We, we've already um, preheated that, so I'm gonna spray this. So we're going to spray this. Patrick, do you mind passing me over the spray, please? Oh, well, here, I'll just roll it over to you. Okay, okay, here we go. It says here, spray broiler rack with nonstick spray and preheat broiler. We already preheated the broiler. Let's go ahead and spray this down. I'm assuming I'm just going to spray this whole thing um, as best I can so the meat doesn't stick to it. So. Let's do that. Yeah, is that close enough? Sounds like this is a little low, but okay. Ah, there we go. Okie dokie. That is sprayed. Okay, and then let's go ahead and not have to continue that stir, that marinade. Make sure that we don't burn that. Let's set this aside. Back underneath the rolling island. Make it a little easier. Gives me some room. Oh, well, let's put these in there first. <coughs> okay. I'm gonna do this so that I can rotate these uh, in the oven in a way in which I can reach the little uh, skewer. So let's put this in here nicely as fast as I can. Here we go. <clears throat> wow, I might run out of room here. But, ah, close enough. enough space. Maybe you can squeeze these last two in. <clears throat> okay, now I'll go ahead and head over to the oven. One of the things that I have here is this oven mitt intended for feet. So I'm going to go ahead and use this to open up the oven and obviously put this in there. But I'm going to use my chin to get it off the island because this angling is of course is, is somewhat awkward. I have to also make sure the dog doesn't get it. <laughs> before I get it into the oven. Okay, uh -huh. it says here we'll be cooking this for four minutes and rotating. Um, so we'll go ahead and, uh, let's see, the oven says it's ready. Wait, I need to put the marinade on first, so hold on. Okay, never mind. Uh, we are doing the right thing. I need to put this in the oven first and then the marinade. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this in the oven. This has a little handle on it, so it makes it easier for me to go ahead and put this in. I'm not too concerned about putting it in, it's just cut off. Taking it out, I'll have to be very careful. But one of the skewers just fell off, so let me go ahead and put that back on here. Whew. 
stay down there. Okay, here we go. Next is to continue to make sure that this is all stirred. Um, and we have timer right now for the cooking. It says here um, four minutes. So place skewers on broiler rack and broil for actually five, five inches from heat, turning until meat is browned about four minutes per side. So that's eight minutes. Alexa, start a four minute timer. Second timer, four minutes, starting now. Okay. So, let me go ahead and start stirring this up a little. Okay, okay. I hope that you're still here with us. It has been a long process, but just so that you all know, my New Year's resolution for 2021 was to learn how to cook. So here we are, and uh, it is intimidating, and I'm excited. But I will say, um, if I can do this, you can do it too. So I hope to encourage you as well. And we're stirring this here until this thickens is what the uh, ingredient, the the whole recipe says. <clears throat> Bring to a boil, stirring occasionally until sauce is thickened, and that's gonna be about eight minutes. Use the so. whole tip of the spatula to stir. Oh so yeah. Get a little closer. So let me go ahead and bring this. Uh, let's see. Of course, it's not gonna be hot. It's an induction oven. I mean, induction stove at the top. So here we go. That's much easier reaching it from that distance. See, it's not thickening at all. It's been some time on this, so I don't know, but I'm going to keep stirring this until it gets thickened. I think we're pretty much finished. I'm just going through the same steps, making sure I didn't skip anything, and I think everything is pretty, uh, I think we've covered most of it, so we're going to wait until that meat is cooked. I'm going to turn them around after four minutes and then let them, the other side cook. And then after that, I just want to thank all of you for being here with me. And uh, of course, the sponsors, this has been sponsored by me. So uh, if you have any ideas of different things with cooking, any suggestions for me, if you know of any companies that you think I should reach out to for potential discounts, that would be great for all of you, I'm sure, if you love to cook and you want to, or if you want to start cooking. Um, there's a lot of companies out there. So thank you so much for your patience and uh, let's hope this all tastes, tastes uh, pretty good. I will say I'm not going to let this marinade soak as long as you would normally soak it, which it says here about two to four hours. Um, of course, the meat will taste much better if it soaks uh, for a while, but um, I'm not going to be able to do that because we're going to run out of time. Um, and so it may not taste as good as it's supposed to taste, but I want to make sure that you all see the finished product. So bear with me as we allow this to continue to finish. Um, and this time, I mean, every everything, every new recipe is, is helping me become better at cooking. I will say that first time cooking, if you were there, I burned the garlic. It was the very first step of the uh, process and I ended up burning the garlic. Um, there's still a little bit of a burn mark in the bottom of this, but hey, we all have to start somewhere and that's part of the learning process. So don't be afraid to burn your food on, and if that ever happens, don't be afraid to keep going and trying to redo and doing it over again. It's just a matter of trial and error, figuring out, figuring out what works and just learning from it all. Wow, this is taking a lot longer to thicken than I thought. So, um, It's starting to thicken a little bit. There we go. That's the eight minute timer. So that must mean it should be at this point thickened. But um, it's still, it still hasn't boiled. That's the thing. And we're at 180. So let me go ahead and center up the pan. The yeah, maybe it's pan, and then uh, up the temperature. Yeah, let's up this here. Okay. Um, up. up to 210. Alexa, stop. Okay. Up 
that's the four minute timer. So now I need to go ahead and head back over to the oven and rotate the uh, skewers around so that the other side of the meat can get cooked. Okay, Alexa, stop. Okay, this is the scary part. I'm supposed to reach in there, but uh, I'm afraid to touch. Ooh, it's hot. Okay, let me go ahead and use this oven mitt. Pull it out a little further before I try and rotate those skewers around. That's what this whole oven mitt is for. So I'll make sure that gets on my foot. And Patrick is going to take care of our marinade so it doesn't burn. So I'm going to pull this out. I'm very thankful for the lady who made this oven mitt. She took a regular mitt and essentially um, made it uh, so that it would fit my foot. I'm very thankful. That. Now we've lost one, one of the skewers, so we may have to just not rotate that one. But these, the others, we'll be able to rotate. Patrick, do you think you can come over and help me with some of these uh, rotations this is, around? This is a test of your cooking skills. Yes, I understand. It. I have absolute faith. Okay, so am I going to rotate it? Because this whole mitt is actually more in the way. Can you rotate them with just your toes? I'm trying to do that right now. Actually. Without the mitt. Now that they're out of the oven a little bit. Ooh, okay. Yeah, here we go. Rotating the first one. The second one's a goner. It's down in, so I'm not actually able to reach it. I got this one rotated. And the other one on the end. Ooh, hot. Okay, the other ones are a little too. That's just something I'm gonna have to learn from is that the others are not reachable. So, in this case, I guess I'm just gonna have to cook on one side. We will learn. And, and I will learn. learn next time. Let me go ahead and put this mitt back on, shove this back in the oven, and uh, let it do its job. I just need it to rotate all of them. But another four minutes. Alexa, start a four minute timer. Okay. Mm. Starting now. And let's see how the marinade is doing. Ooh, that sure is hot over there next to the oven. Okie dokie, we're thickening um, a little more, a little thicker than before, but uh, still, it's kind of thin. I don't know why, maybe let's turn it up a little bit more. Okay, let's turn up the temperature here. There we go. Oh boy. It's taken so long. Did I miss something? Hmm. Scallions, cider vinegar, soy sauce, honey, ginger, cloves, garlic cloves, Asian fish sauce, and the chili sauce. So I don't know what happened. It's just not thickening. Let's go through these ingredients, the steps again. Oh, there we go, now we have a boil. Okay, awesome, it's boiling now. So that must mean it will start to thicken, even though the, we are well beyond the eight minutes that it asked for. But uh, at least we have a boil, that was neat to see. Great. Be careful that it doesn't overboil. Yeah, let me go ahead and turn it down just so. Uh, yeah, there you go. There we go. Was it because I pressed the... No, that was right. Okay. Bring it down to 180. Yeah, it's going to start thickening now that it's boiling. Let's see. Well, there it went again. The boiling stopped. Maybe I need to bring it back up. Maybe that's what it was. We had it at the wrong temperature. Okay, and after that four minutes is up, the, the meat supposedly is going to be prepared will be ready for the marinade. Here we go, we got a boil going again. Is that for the skewers? Okay, great. We have a good boil, so I'm gonna keep it at that temperature. Make sure it's a... Okay. I'm 
Okay, here we go. We're going to keep stirring so it doesn't boil over. We're about finished with our, we have one minute left on the timer of the oven. So maybe we should go ahead and just, uh, huh. We'll get ready to take those out. I don't want this to be boiling over when I'm trying to get the meat out of the oven. Okay, it's still boiling. But we have 22 seconds left on the oven, so what I'm going to do is just uh, leave this here for a second. Hopefully it doesn't boil over. And I'll go ahead and turn the temperature down a little bit so that I can make my way back over to the oven. Turn it down to 180. Okay. Got my mitt here. Got my mitt. Put that on. I hope I put that on right. I think that's right. Okay. Alexa, stop. assistance to bring it over here so I can go ahead once this marinade is finished I can drizzle that on top but we need to bring that up to 210 so it gets back to boiling again okay okay well, you gotta do this in the next video okay yes here we go we gotta boil again It smells a little burned. Maybe I burned the marinade, I don't know. Undercooked those? They're a little undercooked. So we should cook them a little bit longer? Yep. Okay. You think a smaller oven would help? You know, a smaller oven would be easier to use my feet to uh, pull the broiler in and out of, but. How's that looking? That looks... You're doing awesome. I think it's boiled down enough. I you think? I think you can turn that off. Okay. Off. Okay. It's thickening. Finally. The marinade is finally thickening. It took forever. For the most part, it was because it wasn't uh, boiling. So. Woo, that's strong. Okay, that's finished. Um... So, the next step will be to go ahead and uh, let that meat cook a little longer because it was undercooked. That's one thing you don't want to do, for sure. Once that's finished, I'll bring it over here and drizzle some of this down. So, um, thank you again for your patience. This has been such a process for me, but I really appreciate you being there. Um, and uh, again, for those of you who are just now joining, my New Year's resolution for 2021 was learning how to cook. I've somehow managed my whole life not to do much cooking, and luckily I've had people in the family to cook. Um, but now I'm learning, and it's intimidating. But if I can do it, you can do it too. And I encourage you with your goals and whatever you set out to do. Um, if you want to find out more about my foundation that helps people with disabilities, you can go to patreon.com and search Jessica Cox. Uh, that's uh, We have a foundation called Right Footed Foundation International that helps people with disabilities. We recently have an airplane that was donated to help others and uh, help others with inspiring them through aviation. So um, this airplane is in the shop as we speak, but hopefully once we get it flying again, 
more people will be inspired and transformed through aviation. If you want to ever reach out, uh, you can go to jessicacox.com about other speaking events. I've been speaking virtually now uh, with the recent challenges of COVID. Um, I've been speaking from my living room, which has been wonderful to share with other people how to remain resilient, how to stay positive through the challenging times. We've all gone through difficulties and especially now it's, it's even more important to stay positive, be resilient, not to give up. I also have a book on Amazon. It's called Disarm Your Limits. So thank you for joining and uh, on this uh, Tofu Tuesday. And uh, again, if I can do it, you can do it too. Okay. This is the last help I'll do, all right? Okay, thank you. Next video is on you, right? Yes. You guys are going to hold her to it? <laughs> this is kind of like thinning out again. I don't know why, but maybe that's... it's It thickened the heat, and then now it's like thinning out all again, but... Oh, that looks... Oh, ooh. That looks like it's actually cooked. Okay, there's a there's the one I skewered. <laughs> we'll take two of those and put that on this plate, and then I'll go ahead and pour them in and get over them. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, those are pretty. Okay, we'll use the spoon, um, and uh, I'll go ahead and pour some marinade on here and see how this. Now, it may not taste as good as it would be for you if you leave it uh, in the refrigerator for a couple hours. But let me go ahead and drizzle some of this on here and see how hopefully it's going to taste good. Okay, we'll leave some of that for the others. And that looks good. Let's see how it tastes. All this work, I, it better taste good. <laughs> and it is going to be hot, so maybe I should give it a few minutes. But anyways, that's how it looks. I hope all of you can enjoy your own uh, Korean barbecue uh, or Korean steak on a stick. And uh, enjoy it and enjoy all the work you put into it. And I'm sure it'll be worthwhile. So... Thanks again for joining me, and uh, see you next Tuesday on Tofu Tuesdays. Maybe I will try a little bite. Ooh, that's pretty good. That's really good. That's great marinade. Okay. That's delicious. Bye, everyone. Take care.